Guitar practice session 91724. These are somewhat sloppy practice sessions where I work on whatever I think I need to be practicing. I go through the practice session and then give a little bit of a recap of what I was looking at. This being the recap, practice sessions hopefully helping me to generate a routine, helps me to verbalize what I'm working on, which helps to get it in my head, possibly provides information that might be useful to other people going over similar situations and possibly provides for feedback if anybody sees a better way to do the things that I am doing here. I will try to provide this worksheet. So if you want to do a similar type of thing and make your own kind of presentations using these types of tools, don't worry about plagiarism or anything like that. Take the worksheet, do whatever you want to do with the worksheet, make presentations if you want, because I do think that trying to verbalize what you are doing and how you are thinking as though you're teaching it to someone else, even if no one else is listening, is a useful tool to better understand what you are doing. What's a little bit different than this worksheet than some other worksheets that you might be working with is that I try to keep everything going the same way because that's easier for me to see, although I might be a little bit weird, might be a little bit dyslexic or whatever, but I'm sure there's other people out there that are weird like me. So this might be useful in that case where I'm going to have my Excel worksheet top string on top. That's the low or heavy string, the one closest to the ceiling and then reading from left to right, which is similar to when I'm behind the guitar, in which case the top string is on top going the same direction. And I'll try to reorientate my guitar on the screen. So it looks like I'm left handed. So once again, when you're trying to see what I'm fingering, it will be the same direction, top to bottom and uh, left to right that will tie into the worksheet and to your guitar when you're behind the guitar. By the way, I do think it might be useful when we're trying to like learn something to actually sit next to someone instead of in front of someone. Because then again, you can look over the neck of what they're doing in a similar way as you are oriented. Again, that might just be, I might be a little bit like more, that might be a better help to me than other people, but I think that is useful. But in any case, we're going to be this time, uh, by the way, I'm going to be recapping, do the practice session and then kind of recap what I've done to just give you a general idea in the, in the beginning here, which is what I'm doing now. I'm working on what I call shape number two. And I'm looking at what I would call absolute mode number three or the Phrygian mode in shape number two. And I'm looking at different ways that you can name this shape because shape number two is kind of generic. Some people used the cage system to name it, but to do that, you have to look at the related major or Ionian mode and then look at the, the, the shape of that that you would generate to name it like an E shape, for example, which is a little difficult if you're thinking about how am I going to play the Phrygian mode. I'm trying to think about maybe naming the shape by where the starting point is in the shape. So if I'm looking at uh, the Phrygian, I may say it's like it's like position number four uh, Phrygian mode, meaning this is the shape where the fourth note in the shape is the Phrygian. That That's a little, I'm not sure that that'll stick, but that's my new idea I'm kind of playing with uh, here. We're looking at the Phrygian mode, which I'm calling absolute mode number three, because I'm trying to tie it to the major scale, which I'm calling which is the Ionian mode, which I call absolute mode number one, which means that these mode numbers aren't going to change, uh, which is a little different than you might see with other people. But I think it gives us more information because I can see this is the first of the Phrygian. And if I give an absolute mode number three, which is tying to the relationship of the re of the major mode, it orientates me and allows me to use absolute numbers which allows me to do a little bit of simple math to try to basically see the relationship of different modes uh, to each other when we're working in different modes other, other than like the major scale. So I'm going to be doing that. We'll, we'll work on the shapes here. I'm, I'm working on a story for my shapes, which I think is helping me at least to visualize uh, the shapes that keep reoccurring, which is like this shape and then this shape and then this shape, and they just keep reoccurring in our different uh, five shapes along the fretboard. So that's a useful tool uh, to understand, I think. And then we'll take a look at the intervals in the Phrygian, comparing the Phrygian a minor mode, as indicated by the lowercase here, uh, to its related, uh, the main minor, that being the Aeolian absolute mode number six, seeing where that different interval is. We'll count the interval up, and then we'll look at each interval and do the comparison and work on the fingering 
and look at the inverse of each interval from here to here and also from here all the way around to here. And then I just mess around trying to play a little bit in Phrygian. Uh, and I, Phrygian sounds a little bit darker to me sometimes. So I try to do a dueling banjo type of thing, like trying to compare like Phrygian to even A minor, even though A minor is a minor mode, it's kind of, you could play, even, the Phrygian is often heavier even than the A minor sounding. So then those two are kind of interesting comparison, although not as wide a comparison as comparing it to like a major mode. So then I tried to compare it to like, like the Phrygian dueling banjo to like a G mixolydian, which is in the key. And then, but then I'm trying to think, well, what if I compare it to just a G major, which is outside of the key. So go from E mixolydian to like a G major. I think I played with that a little bit. And then I just maybe noodle around in A minor or something. I don't know. That's, so that's what I did there. Okay. This time we're continuing on with what I would call shape number two, but looking at the mode number three, the Phrygian mode, I'm calling it absolute mode number three as it relates to the major scale, otherwise known as mode number one, Ionian mode. The Phrygian mode is a minor mode indicated by the lowercase uh, number three here. When we look at the shape, I'm calling this shape number two because a lot of times people just generically call this first shape, shape number one, that's the pentatonic of it. So shape number two would then start on the second bit after that first shape, there's overlap in between the two. Remembering that shape number two here is going to, uh, is gonna only cover basically four uh, frets, which is perfect for the fingering because of course we have four fingers. Whereas some of the other shapes such as the last one we looked at has more than four frets because we had to cover this uh, this B over here. So sometimes it's not perfect four to five, but the idea of course being that we're gonna break up the guitar and have everything we need within uh, four to five frets is gonna be the uh, general idea. Okay, so I can also name this shape though after the the caged system, many people will call it relate. And when you do the cage system though, I can't really see it in Phrygian. I have to see it in the related Ionian and say, okay, what if I looked at that C, I found that C at the top, and then I built a chord around it. That would be our C major chord, which only has three notes in it, but I could name the whole shape based out off of that, the whole pentatonic and in this case, the major shape based on that. And that you can see is gonna be an, an E shape if I moved it back. So it's our classic bar chord. So if I moved it up here, we could call that an, an E shape. And so I could use that as my cage system to name this entire shape, which works well, but gets a little bit confusing when I'm not playing in the major key, because now I have to say, well, if I'm in Phrygian, well, then what would be the related major? It would be the C. And then what would be the shape if I was playing a C? And then I can say, oh yeah, it's gonna be that uh, that shape. So, so it's useful to see it that way, but maybe, we can come up with other conventions uh, to use as well. I also often think of it as just the C, uh, the, the major shape, uh, because if someone said, hey, I'm gonna play a C major, then what they would do is usually find the C on the top string and then build their bar chord from there, right? That's why, so you might just generically say that's, the, that's basically a major shape because, because on the top string, that's where you would build the major. But that's a little wonky because normally I've been naming the shape based on the first note in it. And that's gonna be this B, not this C. And if I played something from the B, it would be called a Locrian shape, uh, which is the shape that most, we don't play a whole lot because we don't often play whole songs within uh, the Locrian mode. Uh, so, so that's why I would also, I often refer to the shape as kind of like just the major shape uh, because that's where we normally start from. But more specifically, I might try to get more detailed in my mind and, and start naming these shapes kind of at the mode. So if I'm, if I'm talking, so I might call, I'm trying to come up with a new naming strategy that might be a little bit more specific and then allow us to name it per mode saying this is uh, note number two uh, of, of the shape, right? Note number two major shape, right? It's a note number two major shape because it starts on the second note of the shape and, it, and it's gonna be the uh, uh, normal major shape from that note, right? 
so I'm going to start to try to name it like that <laughs> to see how that see if how that flies, see if that works for me. And that way I can also call if I'm on the Phrygian, I could start to call these shapes and say, well, what, what could I name the shapes based on each mode? And I'm going to call this, it would be the note number four Phrygian shape. So if I'm looking for the for the Phrygian, it would be on the note number four of the shape and note number four of the shape is going to be down here. So I'm going to try to add that. That's most people don't call it like a note number four Phrygian shape, <laughs> but I'm going to try to I'm going to try to introduce that so I could start to think in my mind of all these shapes, not just from the standpoint of the top string playing from top to bottom, but also from the standpoint of each mode, uh, possibly, and be and see if I can see if that helps me to understand what is going on better. Uh, but for now, let's say that that we know that this shape is like the major shape and we play it from the C. And now I'm like, OK, well, now I want to go from that to the Phrygian. If I know this is the C major shape and I want to play Phrygian in it, then I can say, well, the Phrygian is the third of Phrygian represents the third of the related major. So I can just count up the shape from here. I can say, well, if that's the one, one, two, three is going to be uh, the third up here. I can also say, well, the Phrygian is the third of uh, the related major. And so a third is a four note away major third. So I can also see that I can also see that this is going to be a four note away major third, which is one string down is five notes minus one is going to be four notes. So that's what we're going to be working on then here from this Phrygian. And then the next question is, well, what's the distinctive item in the Phrygian? It's a minor mode indicated by the lowercase three. Therefore, we, we compare it to the, uh, the, the main minor, and the main minor is the Aeolian. And the Aeolian has a perfect first, and then it has a, a major second. That's the weird one, because you would think it would be a minor second for the Aeolian. But the, the normal one has a major second. Everything usually has a major second except for the crazy Locrian and now the Phrygian. And then, and this, and that's the distinctive one. And then it has a minor third, as you would expect from a minor mode. It has a perfect fourth and a perfect fifth because those are the same on, on the major and the minor and inverses of each other typically. And then it has a minor six, as you would expect, and a minor seven as uh, would be expected. So the Phrygian, is actually more minor than the main minor in a sense because it has now minored the second so this is like as minor as you could get it feels like to me and it is kind of like the darkest kind of mode i think i'm not i don't know a whole lot of like like heavy like metal stuff but but i, th I think they might use this one more because it's got that it might be a little heavier heavier i might be wrong with that but you get when you start to mess around with it, you get that kind of heavy sound sometimes with that second. And it's also if you play the Phrygian on in the key of E, then you've got that open E to, to, to play with as well. So that's the distinctive uh, component. Where are my where are my uh, notes in here? OK, well, we, we know our shape is going to be what I'm calling the house is the box and then the double stop these shapes always repeat so the ha the box is always going to be the same four notes in the box and then the double stop and then you got the double stop box and then you got the two note per string which i call the meat of the hamburger or the flat and then it goes back to the box double stop but it's only the first half of it because here's the whole thing because the two this string and this string repeat so where's the phrygian it's at the bottom of the house so here's our story remember the story the house is owned by the major scale because that's the that's the 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 penthouse is owned by the major because that's the one that everyone recognizes the most and then and then underneath it we've got uh the lydian uh mode which is also a major and so they're at the front of the penthouse looking towards the ocean which is up here and then behind it though on the bottom floor like in the basement that's where you got that crazy, you've got the Phrygian down here, just doing the metal thing or whatever. And then, so it's back, it's just doing its thing like in the basement. 
And then you've got up top, uh, up here, you've got in the attic, that's the Locrian. And people usually just leave the Locrian alone uh, unless they need something from it. It's kind of cool actually, if you, but you have to know what you want to get up to the attic to get that stuff out of there. And then you've got then the, the Dorian, which is a minor mode. So the other minor modes don't hang in, in C's house over here. They're out doing, they're out in their own place. They're like, dude, I, I don't care about your mansion. They're gonna go over here. And so that's gonna be uh, the Dorian. Uh, it's gonna have the minor mode. It's in the, two no it's in the two note per string. And then it hangs out with the other major mode, but it's the Mixolydian mode, which was like the bluesy mode, which has a flat seven. That's why they get along with the minors. That's why the flat seven's like, I, he doesn't live, even though it's a major, it lives in the house. It lives with the minors over here. And then, and then you've got, of course, the, uh, the minor, the main minor mode, which lives also in, in, in the double stop. And, and then it lives on the other side of the two note per string hamburger, as does the, the Mixolydian. All right. So that's the general story. So we're going to be here in the bottom of the house. So we're in the basement of the house, rocking out with the, with the, uh, with the Phrygian and it's also in the in the same position down here because in the box they're always in the same position in the box okay so then if we count out the if we count this out then we're gonna say this is gonna be uh, we can say we've got the one of the Phrygian to the two of the Phrygian I'm just gonna go to the, the holes and half steps and that first step is the differentiating step that gets us to that funny second. So the Phrygian's actually uh, kind of easy to remember that way because it's like that first step that is the funny one. So you're like, okay, that's the one that's different from the related minor. And then it goes, the Phrygian has a whole step going from the second to the third, which is also different from the minor and gets us back in place so we've got the whole step going to here from, from F to boom. And that gets us back to the normal minor. So all that's why all the other intervals are the same. Remembering that they, these, all these modes usually only have one distinct interval from the related major or minor, main minor, major or main minor modes. So then if I go from the three to the four, uh, that's gonna be a whole step. So we go boom, boom. And then when we go from the four to the five, that's going to be a whole step, boom, boom. And then when we go from the five to the six, that's going to be a half step, boom. And then when we go from the six to the seven, that's going to be uh, a whole step. I skipped one. Uh, I think I'm still okay here, whole step. And then when I go from the seven to the eight, that's going to be a whole step bringing us back home and there's the octave so where <clears throat> where are my half steps then my half steps are always in the box so this time when we end we're at that we're starting at the bottom of the box right so that means that we have we start off with that half step we're not going to get back to the top of the box until we have two notes in between if we started at the top of the box and had our half step first We'd only have one note in between, but we're, at the, we're, we're starting at the bottom of the box. So you've got the half step between one and two, and then three, four, and then between five and six. So one, two, five, six, those are where the half steps are in uh, the Phrygian is the general idea. Okay, I think I got all that correct, hopefully. Uh, then we're gonna say, let's go and do our, <clears throat> our interval construction. So now we're gonna say, this is gonna be the second of the Phrygian is the distinct, funny, minor second. Even the minor modes don't have a minor second. Phrygian is more minor than the main minor. That's what I'm saying. There's the, so there, were, there it is. The inverse of that is going to be 12 minus 1, which would be 11. And that would be an 11 note away major 7. Remembering that if we have a minor, the inverse is typically a major. And if we had a major, the inverse is typically a minor. How can we double check that if this is an F? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven gets us to the E. So if we put that in a circle, 
we can say it's going to be either a distance of one step or 11 steps depending on which way you're going. All right, let's go to the next one. We're going to, oh, by the way, the second <clears throat> of the Phrygian, if we name the Phrygian absolute mode numbers, uh, which some people don't do, but I think is highly useful to orientate ourselves using the major mode as a key, this is going to be absolute mode number three. If I try to look at that in relation to the Ionian as mode number one, if this is mode number one, the third mode is two steps down from mode number one. Therefore, our formula for the Phrygian is simply going to be the Phrygian mode three minus one to give us to two because it's two notes away plus whatever I'm on the second two plus two is going to give us four, which is going to give us absolute mode number four, which is the Lydian mode. So there's a Lydian mode. So right in front of <clears throat> the the uh, uh, Phrygian here is Lydian, which of course is at the front part of uh, the house here looking towards the ocean and and they get he gets annoyed at the rock and the, the rock and roll from the Phrygian over here in the basement that's back there but whatever dude we're just rocking back here in the basement so then we're going to go to the next one which is going to be <clears throat> the third so the third of the phrygian of course is a minor third because it's a minor mode and uh the in and uh, and the inverse of the third it should be a little larger the inverse of the third should be 12 minus 3 <clears throat> which would be 9 which would be a 9 note away major 6 so if i went from e to g 3 note away minor third if i went from g to a 9 note away major 6 we know that the third is uh phrygian is 3 minus 1 2 plus 3 is the fifth absolute mode number five <clears throat> otherwise known as the mixolydian uh, mode and that's a major mode indicated by the major uppercase number here and it doesn't live in the house though even though it's a major mode because it's got that flat seven so it gets along with the minors it's over here in the double stop hanging with the dorian which is a minor mode okay so if i go from so then if i go from <clears throat> there to the to the fourth the fourth is going to be of the Phrygian is going to be a five note away perfect fourth like like most modes have they have that good old perfect fourth whether they be main major or minor and the inverse of that is going to be 12 minus five which is seven seven note away perfect fifth so if i go from the e to the a five note away perfect fourth from the a to the e seven note away perfect fifth we also note that uh, the fourth of the Phrygian is mode number three minus one is two plus four is five, otherwise known as the Aeolian mode, which is the main minor mode, the main minor uh, scale. And uh, it, of course, doesn't live in the penthouse either. It's hanging on its own over here in the double stop. It's now hanging with the Dorian <clears throat> over here as well the dorian was was over here living with in the double stop up top when it was on the top floor hanging with the with the mixolydian and now uh and now over here the dorian's on the bottom floor hanging with the other minor mode okay so then we're going from the fourth to the fifth fourth to the fifth and that's gonna be a uh a the fifth is going to be uh what 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 happened here where am i oh yeah the fifth is going to be a seven note away perfect fifth standard fifth shape right there 12 minus five is going to be uh five notes away so if i go from the e to the b and by, by the way i can count this up by going five six seven because there's five notes between the string e to a is five six seven and then and then so if i go from E to B, seven note away, perfect fifth. And then the inverse of the perfects are perfect. So if I invert that, going from the B to E, that's a five note away, perfect fourth. 
because you can't have the perfect going one way without the perfect. Oh, by the way, as well, the fifth of the Phrygian is going to be three minus two plus five, which is seven. And seven is absolute mode number seven, Locrian uh, mode. That's the crazy one that we don't play all the time, but has its uses. And as you remember, it's up in the attic up here the, doing its thing in the attic. Everybody kind of leaves it alone for the most part, unless they need something. Because when they need something that's kind of different and whatnot, then the Locrian actually knows its stuff. So people have to brave the journey to the attic and risk dealing with the Locrian in that case. All right, let's go to the sixth of the Phrygian which is uh, the Ionian, or, or, or the sixth of the Phrygian is an eight note away uh, minor six, which would be expected because it's a minor mode, kind of a distinctive sound there. So you're going to say there's that. I, I think I got that right, yeah. I keep on wanting to put my fingers in like the position one still. So they think that's right, so that looks good. And uh, the inverse of that would be 12 minus 8, 8, 9, 10, 11, which would be 4, 4 note away, major third, which makes sense because the inverse of the minor should be the major. So if I went from, I'm going from this E up top to that C, that would be an 8 note away, minor 6. But if I went from the C down to the E, that would be a 4 note away, major third. We also know that the sixth of the Phrygian is going to be three minus one is two plus six is eight there's only seven modes so eight minus seven is one which is absolute mode number one otherwise it's known as the is the ionian mode or major scale and of course it's at the top of the penthouse living in living in luxury looking towards the ocean ocean view over here uh, okay, so then we're going to go to the next one, which is the seventh. The seventh uh, of the Phrygian is, as we would expect, of a minor mode, a 10 note away minor seven, 10 note away minor seven. <clears throat> and the inverse of that would be 12 minus 10, which would be a two note away major second. So if I go from this, this shape should be, I see that shape, I'm just like, yeah, that's a that's a 10 note away minor seven. But if I invert it going from the top, that means that inverted logically, uh, that has to be a two note away major second, duh. And then I also know that the seventh of the Phrygian is, Phrygian is absolute mode number three minus one plus seven, eight, nine, nine minus seven, because there's only seven modes is two, which is absolute mode number two, otherwise known as the Dorian, which is a minor mode indicated by the lower case over here hanging in the double stop area with the main minor on top and not in the penthouse house over here or in the how the the c's house the major house okay and then we go back to the 12 note away octave boom all right so now we're going to go back the other way but first First, I'll attempt a joke here. So here's my joke. Uh, Joe Biden had high hopes for the country, mainly because he, he was on his son's stash. You know, those, those, those hopes are hanging in his head. And, and the whole dang place up there is high as a kite and as safe as flying a kite through a, through a thunderstorm with a key tied to it, for crying out loud, which isn't very safe. You know, I, I'm all for building high hopes, you know, but, but they need to be grounded. You, 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 can't just build, you can't just build a skyscraper off a cloud. You know what I mean? You can't build a skyscraper off a cloud. You need, you need a strong foundation for crying out loud. You know, stop giving us this pie in the sky bull crap because the bull crap pie will eventually fall back down hitting us in the face. And I'm... And I'm sick of being hit with bull crap pies falling from the sky, dang it. You know, stop, stop throwing bull crap pies randomly in the air. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, can we just start there? I mean, if you just, if you just cease from randomly flinging bull crap ply, pies in the air, I'd be happy with that. That would be like a good, a good start. I'd be 
feeling much more secure. I mean, honestly, is that is that too much to ask? Is that too much to ask? Apparently so. It's ridiculous these days. I tell you what, nothing but bullcrap pies being flung randomly in the air, not caring about the fact that the bullshit, the bullcrap pie is going to fall on someone because it's bullcrap. Okay. Bullcrap falls to the ground like a, like a rock, but stinkier. Ugh. Anyway. All right. There's my rant for the day. Let's do the next one. Actually, it's not the only one. I have another rant, but first let's get back to, uh, let's get back to going the other way. Okay. So now I'm going to say that we're going to start from this E and go backwards. So now we're going to go, okay, if this E, so let's think about this first. I'm at the bottom of what I would call <clears throat> the double stop house or square shape. And so I'm going to do it. And then I'm going to go to the top of what I would call the double stop box or square shape. So duh, duh, duh. And then I'm going to go to the bottom of what I would call the house or box double stop shape. Boom, boom, boom. And that brings us back home. So if I number that starting at the eight, which I would call one or eight, I'm going to start at eight, eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. All right, that's going to be uh, the numbering. And so there we go. So now let's go and do our intervals again. So if I start on the eight or the one and I go back to the seven, it's going to be because it's a Phrygian in a minor mode. We're going back to the uh, to the ten note away minor seven. Now how do I how do I know that's a ten note away? minor seven it's because uh uh well i can go this way and go from the d to the e that would be a two note away major second and 12 minus two is 10 which would be a 10 note away minor seven so if i look at this shape and if i was saying okay if i go from the d to the e that would of course be a two note away major second meaning the inverse from the e to the d is a 10 note away minor seven all right let's bring it back to the sixth so if i go to the sixth of the phrygian which is going to be here then i can see that that is going to be uh, i know it's a phrygian so it's got to be a minor six it's going to be an eight note away minor six how can i see that because if i go from this c down one that's going to be five and then four so from the c that's a four note away major third 12 minus four is eight giving us the eight note away major six so if i see that shape i first think well that's from top to bottom c to e four note away major third but the inverse therefore from e to c is an eight note away minor sixth all right and let's go to the let's go to the fifth so if i go to the fifth the fifth of the Phrygian is a seven note away perfect fifth like normal. How do I know that? Well, if I went from top to bottom, it looks like a perfect fourth because it's a five note away perfect fourth. And 12 minus five is seven, and that would be a seven note away perfect fifth. So if I see that shape, I'm usually thinking from B to E, that's a five note away perfect fourth. But that means that the inverse from E to B is a seven note away perfect fifth. All right, now let's go back to the fourth. Let's go back to uh, the fourth. So, duh, duh, and that's going to be the fourth of a f mode number three. Absolute mode number three is going to be a uh, perfect fourth, five note away perfect fourth. How do I know? Because if I count from the A, it would be five, six, seven, eight. Uh, it would be it would be five, six, seven, eight which would be in be an eight note away minor uh, six and therefore tw and 12 minus eight uh, would be eight, nine to 11, uh, four. Now, hold on a second. Something is weird here. If I go to, so I'm on the fourth here, which is an A, which is going to be five. It should be five, six, seven, not eight. It should be seven notes away and 12 minus. So that would be a f seven note away, perfect fifth and 12 minus seven is 
uh, the five note away perfect fourth. So if I was to measure like I normally would, if I see that shape, I'm like, okay, yeah, from A to E, that's a seven note away perfect fifth. But that means the inverse from E to A is a five note away perfect fourth. All right, and so then if I go back down to the third, so now let's go to the third, measuring the third from here, and we're gonna go to do it. So now I'm on this G right there. So <clears throat> the third of the Phrygian minor mode is a three note away minor third. How do I know that? Because if I count from the G, it would be five, 10, nine. That would be a nine note away major six, 12 minus nine, nine, 10, 11, 12 is three, which would be a three note away minor third. So if I see that shape, I'm usually thinking from G to E, that's a nine note away major six, but that means that the inverse from E to G is a three note away major minor third. All right, and then let's go back to the second, which is that funny interval, the minor second, minor second. And so now I'm saying the minor second is a one note away minor second. How do I know? Well, I can see, I'm not comparing to this one, though I'm comparing to this one, and I can see that would be five, 10, 11. So going from F to E would be an 11 note away major seven. 12 minus 11 is one, which would be a one note away minor uh, second. So if I see that shape, I'm usually thinking from F to E is a 11 note away major seven. And uh, if I invert it then, that's a one note away uh, minor second. And that of course brings us back to uh, the octave. All right. So next time we're gonna go up around this way from this E around the horn. Let's think about it first. So if I go, okay, uh, I'm on like this shape down here. And so I'm like down here, that's at the bottom of what I call the uh, double stop box or house shape. And then I'm like, boom, boom. And then we move into what I'm calling the two note uh, per string meat of the hamburger shape because that ties in the one shape that ties into the to the pentatonic shapes that i'm going to lay over the top of that when we get to the major and minor and then we go to the top you can see it's the top because it repeats up here it's the top of the house double stop so that goes to the top of the house double stop and then that repeats up here top of the house double stop and then finally to the bottom of the house double stop so if i count that out I'd say, okay, <clears throat> and this is going to be one, uh, wait a sec, that's not right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, five, five, six, seven, eight. So hopefully I got that right. Let's do it again. It's going to be one, two, hamburger, th which I'm stepping up the invisible curve because here's the kink in the tuning. So it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, five, six, seven, eight. All right, <clears throat> that's gonna be it. So then we're gonna do our, I'm gonna go through the, uh, the intervals down here to look at them. But first, let's try another joke. I have another joke that I put together. <clears throat> this one may be a little, a little, uh, it, 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 if you don't like the jokes, you could fast forward through the jokes. Okay, so, uh, so so has anybody ever called you immature i mean it, honestly the word seems odd doesn't it because because you would think the proper term would be more like out mature because like like when you hear the word immature it makes me think like yeah i have settled into the to the comfortable and confident state of maturity i'm in mature right i'm in like i'm in mature like I'm inside of maturity, you would think, right? Because that's what it, uh, but, 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 but maybe it should be, it should be not yet. I mean, I think the term might be better said instead of like you're immature, it should be like, like not yet mature or something like that, or possibly under mature, right? Instead of like immature, which you would indicate that you're have achieved maturity because you're in it, right? You'd say you're under mature which is similar, that's like a term similar to like cooking a steak or something where you're like, it's under, it's undercooked. You're like, you're under matured, dude. You're under matured. It's, uh, uh, you're not quite there yet, bro. 
you're totally under matured still a bit under so so we're gonna we're gonna have to turn the heat up on you because you're under matured so that would that would at least make some sense you know like immature immature sounds like kind of like honestly it sounds like almost like an, an adult content term or something like when you think about it you know you, anyways whatever is best not to think about it i mean i mean it'd be like it'd be immature for me to start thinking about being in mature okay i'm gonna clear the mind clear the mind here this is this let's go in we're going into we let's just get back to the let's just get back to the to the intervals uh we're gonna go from now we're gonna go from this around the horn and look at our shapes down here all right so we're going from uh the first to the second so where am i here to do to do to here and we know the second of the phrygian is a one note away the distinct funny second minor second so we're gonna go dun dun and we know the inverse of that is 12 minus one, which is an 11, which would be an 11 note away uh, major seven. So if I go from E to F, that's a one note away minor second. If I went from F to G, that's gonna be a 11 note away major seven, all right? And we also know, let's just go back to this again. The second of mode number three Phrygian is three minus one, which is two. 2 uh, plus 2 is 4. That means the second of the Phrygian is mode number 4, absolute mode number 4, which is the Lydian, which of course is hanging at the front side of C's penthouse, uh, looking towards the ocean, but getting annoyed by the rock and roll Phrygian behind it that's like in the basement making noise. It's like, dude, I thought we had a stronger... Where's the insulation in this place? This guy's down there just rocking out and i don't like the way he does it it pisses me off but whatever dude let's do the next one let's go to uh the g so this is going to be uh the third of the phrygian is a three note away minor third so now we've crossed the uh the earthquake shifted up as you can see here our shapes now uh so now so now this has been shift up we've got to move a step up the up the step up the invisible curb and so the three so this is going to be then uh the three note away minor third which looks like it would be the same shape of a four note away major third but it's a minor because the earthquake shifted the ground under the house right at this fault point okay so uh the inverse of that would be 12 minus 3 which would be uh 9 which would be a 9 note away major 6. so if i go from this e to the g that's a 3 note away minor third but if i went from g to e that's going to be a nine note away major six. We know that the third of mode number three Phrygian is three minus one, which is two plus three or five, five being the Mixolydian mode, a major mode indicated by the uppercase here, but it's the one with the flat seven, the bluesy type of mode. So it doesn't hang out in the house over here. It's chilling in its own place, hanging with the minor mode of the Dorian. All right, but it's shifted up because of the earthquake. That's why it's not stacked on top of each other. All right, let's go to then the fourth. The fourth of the Phrygian is a perfect fourth. So we go boom, boom. The perfect fourth is usually stacked right on top of each other. But once again, that earthquake right there threw it up, threw it up to the top. Looks like a flat fifth, but it's not. It's actually a perfect fourth. And so we're going to say that that's that's and so that's a five note away perfect fourth 12 minus five is going to be uh seven which would be a seven note away perfect fifth so if i went from this e to this a that's going to be a five note away perfect fourth but if i went from the a to the e seven note away perfect fifth dude all right we also know that the fourth of mode number three absolute mode number three is is three minus one 
uh, or two plus four, which is six, otherwise known as absolute mode number six, Aeolian, otherwise known as the main minor mode, which of course isn't hanging in the house. It does its the main minor doing its own thing over here. It's in the two note per string, flat, meat of the hamburger, hanging with the the major mode, but the but the one that has a the bluesy mode over here, which is the mixolydian mode. Uh, absolute mode number five, that is. Mixolydian. All right, let's go to the next one. Uh, if we could and but I like hanging with the with the main minor man I don't want to move on we got to move on you got dude why you always got to move so fast I'm hanging with the main minor okay so now we're on the fifth of absolute mode number three Phrygian and that's gonna be the seven note away perfect fifth so seven little way, perfect fifth. Usually it would be back here, but it's up one because we still have crossed the earthquake fault zone right here, <clears throat> which there's no fault zone between these two. It's between these two strings, but it still affects this one because these two are on the different sides of the fault line. Uh, so it's still affected. So, uh, and then, so we can see then, if I count this out, this would be five up to here, not here, It'd be five to here, 10, nine eight seven so that's how we can count it out 12 minus seven is five which would be a five note away perfect four so if i go from the e to the b that's going to be a seven note away perfect fifth but if i go from the b to the e that's going to be a five note away perfect fourth all right we also know that the fifth of absolute mode number three phrygian is three minus one or two plus five is seven which is absolute mode number seven, the crazy one, Locrian, which is hanging in the house. You can see it up here, it's still in the house, but this is only the top part of the house, but it's in the attic. It's up in the attic and it just does its own thing in the attic and no one, no one talks to it unless they really need to know something that's kind of out of the box, a little bit crazy, but still cool sometimes. If you know what you're doing, you have to go to the, you have to risk talking to Locrian up there, which a lot of people never venture to do because it's, it's, it's crazy. Okay, so then I'm gonna go, what's the next one? So now we're going to the sixth, which is the, uh, the sixth of the Phrygian is gonna be a eight note away major six, eight note away uh, major six. I can count that up by saying this is five, 10, nine, eight, and 12 minus eight is four, which would be a four note away major third. So if I go from here to here, that's an eight note away major six. It looks like a, a, a nine note, I mean, sorry, it's a minor six. It's a minor six, eight note away minor six. It looks like a major six, but it's not because of the kink in the tuning, eight note away minor six, as opposed to a nine note away major six and so if I play, and so if I play this way, that's an eight note away minor six. And if I go from the C to the E, that's gonna be eight, four note away uh, major third. Okay, we also know that the sixth of absolute mode number three, Phrygian is three minus one or two plus six would be uh, eight. Uh, yeah, and then there's only seven modes. So eight minus seven is one, which would be mode number one, otherwise known as Ionian or the major mode, which of course is hanging in the penthouse of the house box here looking towards the ocean. Okay, so then we're going to go to the seventh of absolute mode number three, minor mode, Phrygian is going to be boom. We know that's going to be a 10 note away minor seven, which again looks like it's a major seven because of the earthquake, but it's a minor seven. The fault line makes it minor. It's still minor here. And I can count it out by saying I have to count up sideways going from here to here to get to five and then 10. And so that's why it's a 10 note away minor seven. 12 minus 10 is two. That means that D to E would be a two note away major second. So if I go from E to D, that's a 10 note away minor seven from D to E, two note away minor uh, second. We also know that the seventh of mode number three, 
Phrygian is three minus one or two plus seven, seven, eight, nine. It's only seven modes. Nine minus seven uh, is two, giving us absolute mode number two, otherwise known as the Dorian. And the Dorian over here is the top of like the double stop bit from the square double stop shape. And so it's hanging uh, with uh, the, the, the G, which is the Mixolydian, absolute mode number five, which is the bluesy mode. All right, and then we're gonna repeat that up top here. So let's repeat this one up top. I'm comparing this one, not to this here, but to this shape, which means we're going over an octave for uh, the comparison. Normally I would be looking at this shape going from uh, the B, measuring it from the B, but now I wanna think about it from the E to the B. So what if I was trying to figure out like, okay, what's the interval from this E to that B? Well it probably would be easiest to count it first this way and then look at the inverse, right? So if I was like, okay, if I do that, it would be like five, or I could just measure it to this one, right? But let's do it this way. It's be five, 10, 15, 16, 17. There's only 12 notes in the alphabet. So 17 or in the scale, 17 minus 12 is basically seven minus two, seven, six, five. That would be a five note away uh, that would be a five note away perfect fourth. And therefore the inverse would be 12 minus five, which would be a seven note away perfect fifth. So if I see that shape, I'm, I'm gonna be thinking, okay, that shape from B to E is a, a, is a five note away perfect fourth, five note away perfect fourth. But that means that the inverse from E, did I get that right, from E to B is a, seven note away perfect fifth and then and then if i go to the c i know that this one because it's the sixth of the phrygian is an eight note away minor six how can i check that well i can count down from the c which i normally would be doing right that'd be 5 10 15 16 16 minus 12 because there's only 12 notes it's basically six minus two six five four that would be a four note away uh, major third. So if I go from C to E, whoa, whoa, oh, C to E, four note away major third. So I see that shape. That's the first thing I'm going to think usually because I usually measure from the top to the bottom. But the inverse then would be 12 minus four, which would be an eight note away major six if I went from the E to the C. See what I'm talking about? That's what I'm talking about. I don't know. Talking about, talking about talking about, talking about us. And then I'm gonna go to this one. Uh, wait a second. What happened here? K pasta, oh, I go to this one. Okay, so now I'm on the seventh and that's gonna be a seven note, a 10 note away minor seventh because it's a minor mode and uh, uh, a 10 note away minor seven. How can I count that? Because if I went from the D, it'd be five, 10, 15, 14. 14 minus 12 notes is basically uh, four minus two, which is two, which would be a two note away major second. So if I went from the, D, if I see that shape, I'm usually thinking D to E. I'm trying to be thinking if I see that shape, that would be, that would be, uh, what did I just call that? Uh, a two note away major second, but the inverse then would be the 10 note away going from E to uh, D, 10 note away minor seven. All right, hopefully I got that right. My brain is going a little bit uh, dead here on me. So I think that's mainly it. Uh, so let's just noodle around. As Like if you noodle around in the Phrygian, it's gonna give you that kind of heavy, kind of more heavy sound might be more of a metally sound which I don't know a whole lot about but I I was kind of playing with like if yeah I was kind of thinking that like if you do this heavy sound and you play like a dueling banjo type of thing against the more lighter sound and even the minor lighter sounding than that like there's a minor a so i'm thinking if i go from like the heavy phrygian and then kind of just oppose that to the minor a like they're doing battle 
because the A is still kind of darky sound. You could try to do it a lighter sound to like the G, which you could do the G, which would be the Mixolydian. Let's try that because you get that kind of bluesy sound because I think that the mixolydian having that flat seven to me that sounds like almost like that's like that bluesy thing is like the flavor of American-y sounding music I think that that's like the flavor of the rock and stuff like that so that's kind of that's what it sounds like to me right it sounds like we're you know you're taking the seven note chord and then throwing in that weird flat seven which adds some tension to it which but it also gives you that weird, that kind of flavor, which I think, to me, that feels like more of like the American music flavor. I don't know. But anyway, so if I went from the flat, the heavier flatty thing. And then we did like more of the, 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 the major mode, which is currently in the key of G. What I, well, I was playing it in the key of A, though, when I was doing that. I should be playing it in the key of G, which I'm not used to doing. I, I don't know. I mean, I could play, that was the Mixolydian.
try to play it this Phrygian and just oppose it to an A minor. Thank you. 
try it against a, a, a G major this time. So I'll play like the Dorian. I know I'm playing the same stuff with the Dorian. But then we'll play the A, the G, which is a happy one. But instead of playing G mixolydian, I'll just play G major, which isn't in the same key, but sounds happier. <laughs> So let's try that. So if we played... Thank you. 